Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. We're going to continue our journey looking at XSJS and uh, let's look at some of the tooling around it, specifically the debugger. Now, I'm only going to show you the debugger once in the context of XSJS, but really, because XSJS is just a Node.js module, the same things that we're going to see here really apply to debugging pure Node.js modules. And I, I, no reason to really revisit it later when we spend time on um, on writing pure Node.js. You can just refer back to this, the, the process and, and tooling is the same. The other thing you're going to see here, I'm going to switch over to the Web IDE, is, um, is that the debugger is actually the same debugger that we use to debug SQL script. Now, when we started the SQL script debugger, we went over to the database explorer and we triggered it from there. Uh, we're going to start from the Web IDE editor perspective here, but the same technical debugger will be used. And, and we'll see that here in a second, because I'm just going to open the debugger. And uh, now we want to attach the debugger to an already active, uh, to, a, to a running module. And when I do the attach, it's going to pop up. It's looking at my application and it scanned the application and it saw well all the possible attachment points and, and what you see here is it's got all of our um, all of our database connections in here as well because we could do SQL script debugging from the same tool just like earlier when we did our SQL script debugging we also saw Node.js as one of our options uh, but we only have the one running Node.js service right now. We've created the other SRV, which would be a pure node, but it isn't running yet, and we can only attach to a running service. So that's why we see the uh, XSJS run script start here, and that's the one we want to debug. So we're just going to go ahead and, uh, and attach to it, and uh, what we see here is uh, it sort of just kind of remotely attaches uh, to the already running service. We used to be that the debugger had to like restart the service with a debug port and stuff like that. It's pretty sophisticated now that the, the fact that we're able to, to remotely attach there. And uh, let's just pick one of our XSJS um, services from the previous exercise. One of the easy ones to debug here would be this os.xsjs. And uh, very much like the... Uh, SQL script debugger, we just click in the line area here to, uh, to set the breakpoint. And you can actually see that we still have one of our, uh, uh, one of our SQL script procedure breakpoints still set in the debugger. So, so we have the ability to, to interact with, uh, with both target objects, see both breakpoints. That's fine. We'll, we'll go ahead and keep that one on. We're not going to hit it because we're not going to call that procedure in, in here. Um, but, um, We've set our breakpoint, we've attached the debugger. Now we can just go over to another browser window. And remember, we, we'll test via the web module. So we'll just launch the web module and we'll change their URL once again to um, xsjs.os.xsjs. And what we see here is we see debugger suspended. So down in the, in the corner here, we get a message from Chrome that it's suspended and it's just hanging, waiting. The client side doesn't know that we're debugging. It's just waiting for a response and it's not going to get it right away because we've stopped processing on the server side so that we could step into the debugger. And from here, what we we see is a, is a pretty full debug experience. We've got the We've got the call stack so we can see where we've gone through. And of course, when you're in XSJS, you actually have the ability to see all the way up through the inner workings here of all the things that SAP wrote to create the XSJS environment. So this can be kind of interesting and fun to go back up through here and, and see these things. Uh, but we can also just debug at the XSJS level. Uh, we can uh, step over things here. As we see, we're filling in uh, we're, we're stepping over the commands to read from this module. Um, and as we're doing that, what's happening here is, you know, variables are being filled in. Uh, so we can see our global variables here, one of them being, uh, and we got a lot of built-in stuff, but here's our output. Uh, so as we're running this, we're seeing, well, our our tempter, our Indian, uh, Indianess is, is being filled in. If I skip over another one here, it's going to fill in the... Uh, uh, the temp dir so so you, uh, 
you see it, or, or the host name was the, the most recent one that was added. So you see the JSON object of output being expanded and being dynamically, uh, new attributes being dynamically created here in the debugger. Uh, you know, we've got some other nice features. We've got a, a JSON data previewer in here. So if I come here to output, um, we can see the uh, the actual JSON object as it would appear here. Um, might be easier to look at a large JSON object um, in this way than rather than expanding it in place uh, within the, uh, the, the tool here. Uh, we can write ex expressions. We still have the expression left over from SQL script, but I could come here and I could write a Node.js expression as well, though we're here in the XSJS environment. Um, you know, I have access to some of the built-in objects as well, the dollar sign objects. So I can see the, uh, the application object, maybe more interesting, the session object. I can see my user. I can see the session context. Uh, so I can actually see all kinds of security information. This is the security token that got injected into my application. Um, I can see my security scopes. Uh, I can see uh, the token, the attributes, the, the user info. So there's quite a bit of security information that we can see here uh, at runtime as well. So this could be interesting. Of course, we could go read the documentation about some of these built-in objects, the application, the session, and, and, and see what it is. But sometimes it's just better set a break point, run something and see what you've got in, in memory. And that's a, that's a great way that, uh, that we can use the, the tool here. And of course, when I'm done debugging, I could go ahead and say resume execution. And that would complete the execution and send it back to the client side. Now, many times what you see is I actually got gateway timed out. And what happened there is the client side got tired of waiting. It only waits for a minute or so. And of course, your debug session, if you're poking around in an application, may take longer than that to run. Uh, so we don't get the results back. With our, 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 the client browser had, had stopped waiting. So even though we sent the response back, it didn't go anywhere because there was no longer a waiting client. So we don't see our output. Of course, we could, uh, we could rerun this. We could just uh, refresh it. And once again, it stops in the debugger, but maybe this time we immediately go and we see our client results. Or what maybe I would do is uh, stop here on the, the last line as well. And uh, I'll go ahead and send that in. And to now maybe I look at the output object at this point, and that's going to be my, my actual, uh, what I'm sending back out to the browser. Let me find it here in all my mess here. Let's uh, close up the objects. And there's my output, and maybe I look at my JSON. Oh, no. oh I haven't stepped to that. It helps if I uh, step to the step down there. Uh, resume, and then I stop on the next. There we are. Now I've got my complete output uh, as it would go to the browser, but because of timing out, I can't see it in the browser, so maybe I look at it here in the JSON preview uh, before I, I send it out. Um, so it doesn't look like the preview shows me my uh, inner arrays, but we can actually see those here in this tool as well. Um, so, so this gives you a little idea of how to use the debugger. One thing I will point out, probably when you're done debugging, of course you could just uh, hit continue, but we don't really want to keep that uh, debugger attached longer than we have to. So always remember to come here and detach your, your debugger, so no active sessions. And then of course you can close the, the debug tab. Um, and uh, we would see that our, our uh, XSJS service is really untouched, un, un, unharmed. We could come back here and we could uh, refresh this again. And now it's gonna execute like normal. It didn't stop in the debugger because we detached it. We're ready to go on with our, our processing with no additional load, no additional debugger attached to it.